So a very warm welcome to all the panelists, all the delegates, Ms. Dr. Vandana Patravali, Dr. Uh, John Dissouza, uh, our group director, sir, Dr. Puneet Kumar Dwedi, our chairman, sir, Dr. Uh, Mr. Anil Khariyaji, and our HOD, uh, Modern Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Dr. Sapna Malviyaji. Welcome to the national webinar series, hashtag modern talk on research is it only hard work or perseverance so today we have with us a very renowned personality from the pharmaceutical department dr vandana uh, patravle madam and uh, before starting the program i would like to give a brief introduction about our organization for that i need to share the screen i hope my screen is visible now Modern Group of Institution is a leading group of premier institute in Indore affiliated to RGP Bhopal, GVV Indore, CBSE New Delhi and AICT New Delhi. It is approved by NCTE, PCI and AICT New Delhi. Modern Group is imparting quality education in the field of pharmacy, management, commerce and education. We offer more than eight courses in these fields which includes B Pharma, M Pharma, D Pharma, BPA, BCom, and BA. Modern Group also have two leading industries, Modern Lab and Nandini Medical Laboratories Private Limited. Modern Laboratories was established in 1998, 1979 by late Shri P.C. and Nandini Medical Laboratories was established in 1998. Both gained prestigious acclimation in all India, all India rating of pharma industries. We also have Modern International School established in 19, established in 2013. Also, we believe in innovation and entrepreneurship and hence we introduced MP's first pharma incubation, that is Modern Incubation Center, Modern Incubator in the year 2019, sponsored by MSME Government of India. Recently, we have received World Book of Record UK and World Record Academy USA for making largest human image of medication capsule. Also, we are recognizing participating institute of Unnat Bharat Abhiyan in association with IIT Delhi and MHRD Government of India. The institute also have Modern Innovation Council, which is an institute innovation council by MHRD Innovation Cell. Recently, we have started this national webinar series, Modern Talk, and in which we have already done almost 30 national and international webinar series on different topics related to post-COVID-19. So this was a brief history about our organization. And now I will move further and I would like our chairman, Honorable Mr. Anil Khariyaji, to give a welcome address to our guests. Please okay. unmute. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Warm welcome to Dr. Vandana Patravali, madam, eminent academician and the great researcher to discuss on the research. Is it only hard work or perseverance? I am privileged to welcome you in Modern Talk webinar series. Research commercialization allows technology <coughs> created during research activities to be developed into commercial products for the benefit of the public. This is achieved through technology transfer, which is the process by which technology, skills and knowledge developed during research activities. We are in the era of technology transfer and India has to self-reliant on, on this era to sustain and develop its standards. So I hope this webinar with huge number of participants will be beneficial for one and all. Vandana Madam has been associated with the modern group of institutions in Indore and we have conducted the successful event Apticon 2015 in association with APTI. We are overwhelmed with your gracious presence and I will suggest participants to listen and learn as this discussion will be very beneficial in their professional life. So you are most welcome. I welcome Madam and all the participants 
and uh, mr dr john disuja thank you sir it's our pleasure to be here yes thank you so much sir for your kind words now before moving further i would like to give a brief introduction about our today's speaker dr vandana patravli madam for that i am sharing my screen i hope it is visible now dr vandana b patravli is a professor of pharmaceutical pharmaceutics at the institute of chemical technologies mumbai india her areas of research include development of nanocarriers with major emphasis on malaria cancer and neuro uh, degenerative disorder medical de device development nano diagnostics and nano vaccines she has over 200 refereed publication 11 granted patents and 24 patents in pipeline and two trademarks registered she has published two books and 25 chapters with international publishers dr patravle has been active in teaching research and services throughout her career she was awarded with kukreja oration award 2020 at apti dr manjushri pal best pharmaceutical scientist award 2019 Shri Amrit Modi Distinguished Researcher Award 2018, OPPI Women Scientist Award 2015, Bill Melinda Gates Grant Award 2015, Best Pharmaceutical Scientist Award 2014, Waswick Award 2013, Vento Nanotech Award 2013, APTI Best Teacher Award 2012, Fellowship Member of Maharashtra Academy of Science 2011, and KH Grand Ar Distinguished Researcher Award 2009. she is a vice president crs indian chapter she is an active collaborator with researcher as well as industrious within the country and abroad and has completed indo swiss indo japan indo uk projects she has executed all major grants from indian government focusing on nanotechnology based product development she has transferred many technologies to industries including drug eliciting stents being marketed in more than 60 countries on behalf of entire modern group and entire modern family i feel honor to welcome you ma'am on this national international webinar series hashtag modern talk so now okay. uh, i just want to uh, i would uh, i just want to tell you that right now we have 141 participants with us those who are listening to you and it is increasing and it will definitely increase uh now i would like uh, dr sapna malviya hod modern institute of pharmaceutical sciences to uh, move further for the series for the webinar thank you for those kind words thank you very much madam success is the result of perfection hard work learning from failures loyalty and persistence as it is saying that there is no shortcut to the success indeed it is none as there is no substitute to hard work it's all working hard in a smart way so today we have dr vanna patravle madam a great innovator motivation women motivator so she will discuss about is is research only hard work and perseverance so ma'am i will start the discussion forum ma'am as it's already defined that uh, research problem is the major problem it's a first step towards research and it represents the matter through which it is converted into commercialization so ma'am what are the parameters and necessary principles for selection of research problem what are necessary guidelines for bachelors masters phd research scholars as well as faculty fertility please ma'am highlight this so i feel that uh, research actually when you undertake it should focus on unmet need and specifically i feel that it has to be country oriented so for example in india infectious diseases is something which has been a problem for a long while and still we are struggling we do not have solutions for tb leprosy and now this new covid has also come in so we need to work in that direction 
obviously one needs to do market research very well before you start a research problem which typically i have seen that uh, even our faculty fails so where is it how you are going to position yourself how are you going to position the product which you have developed that has to be taken in the beginning itself so i always tell my students one needs to keep it very simple come up with a solution which is very cost effective and it should readily be scalable and then only it becomes meaningful as you talked about the research problem and you can see that pci syllabus nowadays is giving a project uh, for even bachelor student so moving on from bachelors to masters to phd's and then faculties also who are undertaking you know uh, research i would say that for bachelor students as well as master students you should keep it simple that means take that it is only a training you are going to give to them so that they understand what is meant by doing research so don't be over ambitious whereas definitely as we are moving down the ladder or rather up the ladder this way uh, from bachelor to phd and faculty up the ladder level of this problem complexity should increase so these people should be able to do multitasking at the same time they should be able to do networking and obviously the problem which will be defined would depend on the caliber of student besides the points which i meant obviously as a research guide you would want to do so much but please judge what is the caliber of students to what level can you take him or her and then whether that particular person can work independently in a good way or that person is very good in giving ideas but not very good in working so can you take that uh, quality of that student and see whether how research definitely can take a uh, next step and nowadays you know for faculty i would say that uh, by the time you are faculty member and uh, dr sapna i am really really very happy to see how you are networking on social websites so you do have so many platforms where you can actually network and identify your own collaborators even ugc and in fact in this covid time people have given you free websites free books there is a website by iit kharagpur where all the papers are freely available so why can't we make utilization of these resources which are available to us and come out with solutions for problems which definitely are nation centric so i am a very very proud indian so i would like to say that first we should tackle problems which are country faces and then go to other problems which need to be tackled thank you very much ma'am for the appreciation and indeed we learn many things from you also so i have listened many of your lecture uh, that is related to research here i concluded your things that research should be cost effective and we should definitely go for b form and m form students with a simple training and then have the higher motivation factors from faculties and research scholars thank you very much ma'am our viewers are very much interested to know about the topic ma'am research is it only a hard work and perseverance uh i basically written in the chat box that it's a madam's view to give this highlighted topic so kindly elaborate it madam so according to me definitely these parameters are important for executing any research project but i feel that according to me research is more of a passion in fact i will take it a step ahead that people like me meditate while doing research so it takes you to higher level so consider that this is something which is once you you consider that you are going to work for your nation 
you know you can bring in all the quantities all the qualities which the researchers need so it's not only hard work and perseverance i would put it as that it motivates you further propels you further to do more good and good and that is the way it has to be perceived so that is what i would like to say so it's not only hard work and perseverance it is much more than that it is collaboration it is networking it is your faith it is your belief it is meditation everything one uh, under the sun i would say to me yes it's a passion it's a grit and it's everything thank you very much ma'am now uh, moving forward i would like to discuss with you ki please guide us about the allocation of research budget what happens many times there are the hidden dimensions which we are not able to see while filling any proposals and projects so kindly let me know about how we can uh, allocate the research budget so first thing i would like to tell all the researchers out there who are uh, writing research projects is read the guidelines for those research projects really very well once you understand what is a total budget a granting agency will give then you come to the next part and divide your uh, allocation you no know, the budget you allocate for uh, either the junior research fellow or the senior research fellow whether the project demands one senior research fellow or two research fellows whether, whether that particular fellow would be in one location or two location so major funding actually goes for research fellow because when you are making a provision when you are writing a project typically you are writing for a period of 3 years so chunk of the funds would go yeah. for this fellowship besides that there are other things like consumables so if you are writing something for example for biologicals i would say that you need to ask twice the amount which you would otherwise write for normal small apis then comes equipments so identify which are those equipments which would be required for that particular research project and then accordingly allocate see what i would try to tell you here is that whatever you are writing you should be able to justify so there should not be a mismatch plus directly or indirectly government agencies are asking you to provide for list of uh, equipments and instruments which are available at your end as also which are available at collaborators end so they are seeing whether you are replicating those things so if that happens definitely they are going to curtail uh, the sanction so it would be very important to identify which you do not have write that and maybe you can you know make your project revolving around that particular equipment or instrument besides that you can ask for contingency small amount for daily uh, you know whatever suppose you are doing xeroxing etc or you want to do a very important thing if you want to patent your work there are agencies like dbt who support you but there are some agencies we do not support you for patents so you can ask money even for patents and publication in addition to this money can be asked for travel and for overheads so these overheads are typically what goes for the institute for most of the government projects it is 25% but for some they can limit it to 10% so these are major major uh, i would say bifurcations which you need to do but keep in mind that uh, uh, there could be uh, typically you no know, challenges in these allocation and those challenges are with respect to grants so they are grant agency specific and grant specific so more than that there is no challenge actually at uh, researchers end but it is the granting agency which can put some particular uh, uh, you know uh, basically a limitation beyond which you cannot go just to give you example if you are writing a project say for brns which comes under department of atomic energy 
you can write easily a project worth 15 lakhs but if your project demands more money that means suppose you are going to say deuterate certain compounds and then look at its efficacy which involves both synthesis formulation pharmacology your budget can go up to a crore so then in that case look at within dae which is a granting authority which will give me this sum okay so it's not that they will not give but you go to the right kind of agency that becomes important same as the case with dbt also so dbt is one dbt byrac is another one so identify whether you are going to do work within the uh, institute or whether you are doing work you know with the industry people and accordingly select which will be the granting agency then what and about the uh, dst sarb if in the sub we want to put the similar bifurcation because they don't put that specification about the patents and other things so we have to put in certain sort of things or then we have to intermingle it means what to do in that so exactly so in contingency money you can ask okay. so if there's no no special uh, this mentioned you can definitely ask that in the contingency money and nowadays they very well understand that patent uh, is is becoming important i would come to it little later but i at this stage i would like to say that if you feel that your patent doesn't have commercial utility please do not patent because it really will kill your resources to maintain a patent you require much more money than to file it so just to make your cv really attractive don't go for patents okay fine ma'am proper identification of resources and then proper filing it and then a very good thing which we which we really added to our thing is that file it for patents and other things thank you very much for an informative thing ma'am uh, moving ahead uh, see basically what happens is the road of success is always construction and it is always said that women are the high available reservoir of talent in the world it's very much true ma'am so please share your journey as a research expert expert i don't yes, consider ma'am, we, myself please we we consider it <laughs> we uh, consider I, i am a learner i would say and not expert so obviously i would say that uh, seeds of this research actually are probably genetic because professor bhalla who is my father you know my role model he is a renowned scientist global renowned scientist i am nowhere near him so definitely i feel that this started in this way but yes further i joined after finishing my b pharm from km kundanani college of pharmacy i joined for master of pharmacy at udicity which is now ict and of course continued even for a, a phd under the guidance and mentorship of professor s g deshpande much has to be attributed to him for molding me as a researcher i sincerely feel all what a researcher needs is freedom to work and once you have given wings to that particular researcher he or she will only fly they are not going to crawl or walk so if you see a spark in any particular researcher a young researcher give him or her wings to fly so that is what i learned from my research guy and i am practicing till date plus in addition the research culture at ict has been such that you are learning from peers you are learning from your seniors you are only on the way to excel there is nothing else but to excel so i got a environment a research culture which was such where everyone was working working very hard not only i mean in terms of time but taking up challenging problems and brainstorming coming together brainstorming and moving ahead coming with good uh, solutions to those problems then of course i joined as a lecturer in year 1991 at icit 
and at ICT, uh, may not you may not know from day one itself, you can guide students. So we started guiding early on, and that is what has made you know our career journey the way you can see it in terms of publications, etc. So then I started publishing my work, and with that publications coming in public domain, people started recognizing what type of problems we were tackling. So that gave the foundation for me to get connected to industry. Last five years, we have seen a sea change. Earlier, we used to go to industry. Now they are coming to us because they also realize that innovation is the key. And where will you find innovation if not in universities? So industry people started coming to me Actually, if you ask me, you know, I started with a very simple, uh, uh, I would say, formulation, which now has become very important for all of you. But in year 1991, I was filling liquids into hard gelatin in capsules, not knowing at that time that I was making nanosystems. But industry was not ready to take those systems because they were liquids and hard gelatin capsules. They did not have machinery. So I converted those into adsorb form, converted them into powders. So they became nano absorb systems of mine. What I'm trying to say is one simple system, one simple idea has given rise to n number of my research platforms. From nano absorb, then we started making acid resistant nano absorbs for those drugs you know, which get degraded. From there on, I went on to SLNs. SLNs to NLCs. NLCs, then I made nanojets, which can be injected, nanotags, which have active targeting, and also many, many other kind of systems, including uh, 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 in NLCs itself, FE nanobodies. So which, where drugs, which are hydrophilic, have affinity to be put into NLCs. So it is one system which has given rise to 10 different technology platforms. And obviously, once we did work on this and started working on other areas like diagnostics, vaccines, etc., uh, keeping in mind that my uh, things have to be very simple, cost effective, and scalable, there was no looking back. So yes, I went on creating infrastructure also delivered lectures at many forums so people started knowing what kind of work i was doing and that really has given impetus uh, to our research i would say then definitely ma'am it was very inspiring means we definitely learned many things and the importance of mentoring and involvement really play a vital role in our life many greetings are there from mr saurav s kumar from core college of pharmacy varnagar and uh, many institutes, Dr. Amit Chorasia is there. And many people are greeting you and they are very happy to listen to you. And this session has been very informative for them. They have already been written. And around 170 participants have joined us right now. So ma'am, uh, we were just in the discussion in that uh, you already said that industrial fundings are very important for academic research. My next discussion is on linked on that only, how to fascinate the industrialist to collaborate with the academic. Say, see is the key role, key thing is that academy industry collaboration. So means how to approach it or means how they can come to us. Great question. It's not simple but not impossible. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, obviously, for this, I would say that do work in niche area. First is that. Be ahead of your peers. And for that, we need to update our knowledge routinely. And see that you have rational selection of drug candidates or dosage forms. So again, you know, the trend which we see is if someone is working on solid dispersion, everyone else will work on solid dispersion and put any kind of drug into solid dispersion, even if solubility enhancement is not desired. See, if drug is in BCS class 1 category, it is easily soluble, easily permeable. Where is the need to put it in solid dispersion? So try and understand 
the rationale behind doing that work then once you have identified niche area of working and you have identified the hypothesis on which you are going to work see that if idea is patentable patent it first if you see that there is a commercial viability patent it first once you have patented start approaching industries you can float emails because area wise you will know which particular industry is working in that area you know some industries are working only in diabetes some are working only in women and child health care so go to their websites and identify which are those industries to whom you would like to approach once you have done that just don't keep quiet once the email has been sent they'll come back to you see that you follow follow up is very very important so after that they would definitely come back to you out of maybe 20 which you have written at least one will come back to you yeah then see that before you start your discussion you sign a confidentiality agreement with them and the first meeting itself do not give whatever formulation you have to them ready on platter see whether they are interested then look at how can you you know you and your university gain from this collaboration when you are doing say technology transfer whether they can give you some milestone payments they can give you all money at once or they can give you royalty which arises out of patents in that case you may have to transfer your patent in their name so you will be inventor but they'll become the assignee so that needs to be kept in mind plus i would say that uh you you have to know to market yourself well so that uh, uh, people have to learn from dr sapna i'm also learning oh, uh, ma'am it's a huge compliment please <laughs> i'm very much grateful to you. you you would not believe today i heard your youtube talk just to get pepped up so oh, that, ma'am that, thank that, you that, very much it's a huge I means that's a huge appreciation in this platform but it was just means i just get inspired from you people only ma'am and i have been talking to you whatsapping you and i don't bother you much but then you people are uh, sarav madam you manjriti garar madam these are all my inspiration ma'am so thank you very much yeah. so basically me. what i am trying to say is uh, utilize media also in a proper way so you, you have encourage i really do not know what is the number of students would be listening to you every sunday so that is really great and same thing meaning we have people like dr mashelkar listening to his talks listening to dr sharma's talks professor yadav's talks really gives us a different level of uh, you know uh, takes us uh, to do much much more than what we are doing so do that and once you know you have shared the details with the industry they are definitely going to come back to you other thing is let industry know what kind of infrastructure your institute has and once they know for that specific use of infrastructure they would definitely come to you for example in our lab we do have type 4 dissolution rate test apparatus from sotex and industry was not ready believe me when usp came the latest usp came into existence many of the dissolution suddenly changed to usp type 4 and industry didn't have that facility to do work so the net result was that we as academic institute became the the gainers you know that people started coming to us we developed methods for them and uh, then they took it uh, slowly at their own industrial level so define which equipment give you you know leave in terms of money finally utilization of any of these will involve cost so your university is going to benefit they can keep one day charges right for use of that particular equipment or maybe even one month charges if industry needs it so that's the way and if one industry comes you know what is the turnover in industry people leave and go to other universities or uh, sorry other industries also very fast in pharma 
so the message reaches to the next industry too so it's by word of mouth as well as by media like this you know you would see a very uh, i i just saw a nano medicine research group which we have at ict you know uh, who are my own students dr ratnesh jain and prajakta dandekar jain they have made a video and they have put what facilities they have very often my new year greetings are with my bbp research group uh, the facilities which we have so that is a way how you can reach people to say that what you have to offer they'll definitely come back to you sure ma'am we are also privileged to have our two pharmaceutical industries and a very good infrastructure i just learned from you that we have to explore it and more people should know about our facilities so that they will be connected to us thank you very much ma'am uh, moving forward uh, one global concern is there ma'am about the dilution of the academic standards and poor quality of publications i just want to know please highlight the contents and the requirement to publish good research article means uh, what a researcher should actually plan for it so here again you know just like uh, patents i always tell all my colleagues you know there are only three criteria which can judge your uh, publication which is the inventive step so novelty non obviousness so if everyone else is doing you are doing the same thing has no meaning and industrial applicability so just like patent has these three parts your research papers also should target these three parts what is very important is when you are writing a publication use simple technical language do not use a complicated flowery language which becomes difficult for the you know people uh to read because when will you get citations when people understand what you have done and when will they understand what you have done if you write it in a very very simple way so make the study which you are doing a uh, research problem which you are tackling it should be a very very well structured study and ideally i have seen nowadays that if you have some kind of interdisciplinary work those papers get more preferred unless you are working on some basic concept where you are doing mechanistic type of study to show that what is the utility of that work otherwise see that you do some interdisciplinary work and try to present that again utilize recent techniques so no one would want to publish a paper you know which is on a age old uh, concept so no high impact factor journal will take that so one needs to keep uh, that also in mind so use of course novel techniques yet those which have translational uh, capability so that needs to be kept in mind so just to make it novel you know many days i uh, nowadays i see people making nano carriers so that nano carrier will have drug it will have polymer it will have lipid it will have antibody it will have some receptor targeting ligand all that can be done but whether commercialization of such systems is possible so that needs to be kept in mind and then move ahead i am sure that uh, then good publications and uh, very good impact factor journals would come through definitely there is a buzz over the transitional research nowadays and we should definitely move forward with it uh my next discussion is on the sequence only ma'am uh can you please highlight a specific criteria how to drive the research towards commercialization so as you already have told me many things about it but then specifically highlights are there how to plan it start from starting onwards to end it in the commercialization only so i will put it in two parts you know there is one research which you are doing and then you want to take it to the commercialization and the second part is when industry has something novel idea they come to you you work on it together and then it goes for commercialization so typically i would say that success in the second case is much higher because there it is being driven by industry so that is a simple straightforward procedure because industry has some particular problem area 
and they are seeking your advice you are working together at each and every step and taking it to commercialization coming to the first part i have already told you that first your hypothesis has to be very very strong once a hypothesis is strong see that you make proof of concept ready and by proof of concept i mean that your formulation should have pre clinical data as well as stability data complete often we as academicians do a mistake and that's happened from our end also many a times that we do not look at rs data at all so what is related substances you know as per pharmacopeial methods so see that your method which you are using is stability indicating method so once your proof of concept is ready file a patent after that cda after that memorandum of understanding wherein you are looking at what could be the norms of finances once mou is done milestone payments are there then share data with them once you share your data you have to be very clear clear till what stage you are going to support them that should be clear right in the beginning whether only for a batch size of say about 50 kg or till they take validation batches depending on that your the amount which comes to you as pi and to university will differ because if you are going to take this through validation batches you know that you have to do so much more so from proof of concept small scale it goes to pilot plan scale optimization happens then it goes to validation three production batches and then it goes in market so if that is a long long procedure so uh, depends on which industry you are working with so many times you know it's a small scale industries and they would want your uh, uh, you know support till the end but then there are companies which are multinational who just want to take your idea they may take your idea in which you have worked on one drug but they might want to put some other drug candidates on your platform so there the story is entirely different so that differs accordingly yes ma'am definitely to add more value to the research outlay these all points will be definitely implemented in our lifestyle and our projects and all those things ma'am for patents we have talked many things uh, tell me something about design patents today basically many people are filing design patents specifically about the designs only so please highlight on that so uh, meaning very simple in fact if you are fabricating anything that becomes a design just to give you example like in market you would have seen rota haler which is used for pulmonary delivery where yes. capsule is put and then you are turning you know the rota haler so powder actually disperses so what we did in our lab is we wanted to actually administer more than two drugs so if you want to put two capsules it becomes very difficult rota haler will not do the job so we designed a rota haler kind of device by way of which from one side you could do one particular drug inhalation the second side you could take two additional combination drugs in combination so it's a nothing but fabrication this fabrication could be of a equipment it could be of a instrument it could be of any small things like what we have done second device design which we have taken us for rectal administration now that route is becoming very important for delivery specifically because of you know that homosexuals so aids was on rise because of these issues so can something be given by that route if it has to be given how will you actually administer the therapy so we designed a uh, another rectal uh, device which could deliver anti hiv uh, formulation in the rectal mucosa so that those nanoparticles can readily be taken up and you will get faster effect so in a nutshell i would say 
if you are doing fabrication which is new which has not been reported earlier that has to be taken as a design patent yes. other patents are common patents which are for either process or product yes any innovative design will definitely go for design patent yes. ma'am as a author uh, many times you have seen you have written many books many articles many monographs so tell me something about what points an author should keep in mind before drafting any kind of book ma'am oh god book is a total different uh, you know <laughs> i would say game i i would say that uh, four p's which are important planning perseverance patience and people so when you are writing any book see that you have a paper plan ready because you will be involving multiple authors from multiple institutes if you are doing it all by itself edited and authored by you it's much simpler but if you want to involve many authors from different institutes see that you have white paper plan ready wherein with chapter first draft when will you get second draft when will you get final draft when will you get and uh, uh, you need to take uh, say permission from publishers for certain uh, you know figures tables etc so by when those authors will be ready with those contents so planning is most important perseverance unless you have this quality please don't go in for book writing i would say that uh, it's very very important that uh, once you have taken a goal that you would be publishing a book you see that you reach the end target you can't leave it in between say for books which we are writing you know we are writing for publishers like elsevier and uh, crc crc press etc wherein you have to give a detailed information to them right in the beginning when you are saying you know what would be the target audience which books are there which could be your competitors which are the authors whom you are going to approach you have taken all that those permissions and then you have signed in fact you need to sign a, again a cda with them you have signed and then if people start going back that they don't have time to write i mean everything becomes a fiasco so see that you select people who are really good on whom you can rely such people only should be authors if people start you know leaving this in between it's not a good practice so i would not give chance to such people any time in my life so four piece remember planning perseverance patience because it's a long fetched goal book writing doesn't get completed in two months take it from me it takes at least one and a half year to come out with a very good book add one more p because plagiarism check has to be done so it has to be non plagiarized so uh, that can be added and uh, i think then you are ready for book writing good writing skills are important everywhere be it research papers research proposals be it your uh, patents and of course also in book okay ma'am i mean basically i was thinking in the way that if we involve many authors it might be easy because i only go with the but you have just changed the concept and idea because i never went for many authors so i was not aware of this fact so basically you have changed the concept and mindset today so rest all point I, i would like to add here you know what is happening is you no know, people have many indian books in market but uh, one needs to be really very very careful what you just said you know give it to different authors each one writes one chapter and your work is just putting them together no your work as editor is much more than that once you get those chapters believe me i have to do plagiarism check at my end i have to see whether they have given me publication you know the figures etc permission at each step i also have to see what language they have used is their grammar correct that's a big thing each chapter i read reread reread 
so at least thrice i have to give a reading so that that's a herculean task so you need to have time and patience both to deal with the people then definitely passion will be converted into the profit passion to profit absolutely <laughs> because uh, you would not believe but uh, the books which we have written you know many years back we are getting royalty from uh, these foreign people yes. so they they never go back on that so continuously every year the money flow would be there definitely thank you very much ma'am uh, total 191 participants has joined us till now uh, moving uh, forward means it's little personal question ma'am what were your inspiration before joining pharmacy course this this question means it's applicable to all pharma stalwarts so because people are they having the aspiration from you people only so uh, i already already have given you partly that answer that i had role model in front of my eyes so professor mm -hmm. balla my father was very much there and he has always told us no that uh, you can make a difference he's always instilled that in our mind that whatever future path you take you can make a difference so it is not that it's only pharmacy where you can make a difference anything but looking at him and because obviously then dr lala who was who was uh, sorry now late uh, professor uh, lala who was principal of kem kundanani college of pharmacy where i later joined to pursue my b pharm they always used to be visitors coming home and looking at their dynamism i always felt that this is what i want to do so by choice i never wanted to do medicine typically it has so happens that people don't get medicine and therefore come in pharma here i had seen them working and uh, the the i won't say the glory which is, uh, of theirs is what attracted me but i could see there was some dynamism some passion that they wanted to make difference and that is what propelled me to join pharmacy and uh, once i joined of course i wanted to be a teacher always and if i have to answer that i didn't want any boss so i didn't want to join any industry i wanted to be my own boss and i'm very happy that icit has given us that kind of flexibility to be our own boss so uh, happy that i selected no regrets whatsoever that i have selected this profession and uh, you can see i mean i am a fan of dr b suresh right and you already uh, interviewed him looking at such personality is you know really gives us that we are a very very little drop in that ocean and each drop definitely if they come together can make a ocean so why can't each one of us do something great for the society so that overall the image of pharmacists you know goes to a next level which currently is not and we ourselves are responsible for that so we need to work really very very sincerely for our profession and see that this profession in india is the highest respectable profession i always tell you know incidentally my uh, son is a medical doctor he's a surgeon i tell him if i do not give you medicines how are you going to do practice definitely <laughs> so means it's so, like a food only <laughs> absolutely see see it is meaning i am not uh, saying that uh, uh, their importance decreases but our importance is really huge so we need to really uh, build quality uh, basically products so that needs to be uh, done you know that needs to be done yes ma'am definitely i mean after li listening to you i'm just spellbound means goosebumps are coming <laughs> means it's so inspiring and so motivating uh, coming and moving forward ma'am please tell me about the government fundings which are available for pharma research scholars for pursuing their phds uh, we can say that opportunities and and during phds ma'am okay so this again i have given a, a total talk but i'll repeat no problem for phd students typically you do have ugc net exam 
और डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायोटेक्नोलॉजी ऑल्सो हैज अ बायोटेक्नोलॉजी एंट्रेंस एग्जाम प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट फार्मेसी ग्रेजुएट्स ऑल्सो कम अंडर लाइफ साइंसेस एंड लाइफ साइंसेस इज इंटीग्रल पार्ट ऑफ डीबीटी सो सी दैट स्टूडेंट्स डोंट मिस आउट ऑन डीबीटी ग्रांट्स व्हिच आर देयर इन एडिशन टू दैट देयर आर सीएसआईआर एंड आईसीएमआर फेलोशिप्स which can be uh, given to students if you want to go out of country and look for the grants you do have uh, indo usa grants which is us india education forum you also have indo uk which is welcome trust grants available to them and just to tell you maybe many of you may not know that there's a single girl child grant also so for women specifically who are the only child of their parents no siblings we do have from ugc single girl child grant and in fact this is over and above the grant that girl child might, might be having from other sources and highest paid grant is for phd students is dst sub cii grant CII standing for Confederation of Indian Industries, and this is known as Prime Minister's Fellowship. In this case, the research guide has to identify an industrial partner. Even research student can identify. This particular industry gives half the amount to government. Government puts in equivalent amount, and the research student gets. in today's date 93000 per month yes it's a huge amount means very yes. very huge amount many of our faculty colleagues do not get that amount but this particular mode why why has government started this see there are so many different angles to it once a student is working on a prime minister's fellowship that student's job is guaranteed in that particular industry so it has increased the employability and industry is coming to academia so academia industry connect is happening there and that also has to be inculcated so definitely government is looking at it no it's like one sparrow and uh, you are using uh, one arrow and two sparrows i would say right so that kind of a thing that's happening so uh, i feel that these are the grants uh students also have travel grants and short term exchange grants in addition to this so you have by france you know there's a something called as cefipra which comes from france then there is a great scholarship which comes there is a dad program dadd -D, from germany and then those students who are in the second year of phd they can also write newton baba grant Uh, to go to uk so part of their work they can do in these countries no be it uk or germany or usa and number of grants are there yes ma'am thank you very much so these were these grants definitely will help the viewers ma'am one thing i just want to know as a great uh, again I, i will say it but it's for me as a great pharma academician any message for specifically pharma academicians and young budding pharma professionals since you like to give i have more than one message is it okay yes yes ma'am you are most welcome the first thing i always tell people is remove impossible from your dictionary first thing is that second is every day life is going to send you little windows of opportunity and your destiny is defined by how you respond to these windows of opportunity so do not shrink take risks so move out of your comfort zone you may fail but हिंदू हिंदी में कहते हैं ना सब कुछ खो देने से बुरा क्या है आंसर टू दिस इज वो उम्मीद खो देना जिसके सहारे आप सब कुछ पा सकते हो सो नेवर एवर लूज एंथम दैट इज द की दैट्स द मंत्रा एंथम एंड टू माय फैकल्टी कलीग्स आई वुड से नेटवर्क 
because coming together is the beginning keeping together is the progress and working together is success so follow these and i am sure there is no looking back whatsoever yes if opportunity does not give you any door uh, any any opportunity is not give you not create just a door. make a door <laughs> create a door just a create absolutely it. absolutely yes ma'am uh, ma'am i just want to know about this drug hackathon as the great initiative we are proud pharmacists to say that it's drug hackathon is a initiative of pharmacy council of india and our honorable dr b suresh sir has given this opportunities ma'am can you just uh, highlight something what we and all the other pharmacists can plan about this drug hackathon means what all projects uh, can be thought of as it is of associated with covid so uh, majorly you know this is uh, uh, pci is a part but definitely you know that uh, you have aict csir principal scientific uh, advisor from government of india and my go all my government all have come together and uh, this has been focusing on not necessarily but major focus is on in silico drug discovery followed by its chemical route of synthesis and then testing and this has to be done in a time bound manner so one thing which is required is that one has to have very very good software for molecular docking right so i i think even shodinger is supporting this particular hackathon uh, uh, the initiative so i would say there are many ways of doing there's a full article in nature which has come you know which has given you all kinds of targets if you act on those targets covid would be taken care and there are n number of those targets so you can first starting point could be that nature's article itself try and understand virus and try and understand virus entry mechanisms first before even you start synthesizing something so it could be something which acts as fusion inhibitor it meaning for example you know why are we wearing masks because typically that's the route of entry Yes. but if you can prevent that virus to go you know inside in the nose itself if you have some inhibitors given through the nasal route it can be taken care so fusion inhibitors then you can go to the next step wherein you have you know certain rna inhibitors you have some others wherein you are looking at molecular machinery so n number of targets are there typically i have seen with whatever reading i have done you know you can take leads most of the drugs which they are proposing for covid are from antivirals and specifically keep in mind that all hiv drugs anti hiv drugs are enveloped dr- basically you no know, are uh, hiv uh, virus is a enveloped virus covid virus is a enveloped virus so likewise you can look at what are those drugs which are acting on different enveloped viruses can i repurpose this, those type of drugs here so the examples of remdesivir and favipiravir which have come are the anti hiv drugs which are being repurposed so similar way there may be many other viruses i am not taking names because we are also participating in the hackathon so okay. there are many many other uh, uh, i i can definitely give you the lead how the thinking what has gone beyond uh, it so look at what are different kind of uh, envelope viruses and what has worked for them second thing is that we can take leads from our ayurveda sure so can you formulate you know herbal actives either as such or can we modify those herbal actives look at their sars and then repurpose it for covid so these are two ways by which we are tackling but as i mentioned the nature article will give you much more insights so if someone is interested they can write to me i can pass on that article 
if it is not available but as i said iit kharagpur has opened all its resources so you can uh, definitely get uh, that article from there yes ma'am definitely will refer those article and be in communication with you will definitely go for drug hackathon ma'am my last question is that how private institution can increase the fundings i'm saying it because previous statistics revealed that they acquire less funding might be means uh, it's not very much true i'm not sure but then uh, it it's as per the statistics first thing i would say is uh, uh, one has to have a great infrastructure so whatever money you are generating see that you pump it back to make a great infrastructure i'm very happy to hear from you that you all are running to industries this yes. model i had seen only when i had visited japan hoshi university so definitely if motivation is provided and infrastructure is provided you as researchers can work on problems such that they can be translated and uh, you no know, it can be marketed by that industry so provide great infrastructure second thing i would uh, actually like to cite you know nmims and bncp as two model institutes who are doing really very good so if you see their nirf ranking also they've come really high up and i am in one way or the other connected with them at all levels at ug at pg at research level what i have seen that there is they are giving lot of incentives to teachers so if you are publishing as a single author in addition to your salary you know there is a nominal amount which is given it's a joint authorship there's a separate amount depending on impact factor it's a separate amount so those are kind of incentives which they are giving to teachers so that they can do more and more and you know that it's finally the research culture build up which is going to bring them in a way what are they doing if teachers are writing papers that means they are reading more if they are reading more meaning they are getting more ideas and they are getting more ideas they can zero in on ideas which have translational potential and simultaneously they are uh, building their infrastructure and uh, other thing which i have seen is that every saturday they are having some webinars you would have seen dr pethe doing a great job no i see uh, in seminars and workshop group every saturday there's a, a webinar by industry person so if industry people are getting connected to you obviously they'll know what kind of infrastructure you have and what kind of mindset you have and if both these things are correct they are going to come to you obviously you have to give them uh, returns in deliverables and time dependent manner but if your question was that private colleges have not been able to attract funding from government i would say you have to take this out of your mind because being on the other side being on the evaluation committees i've seen that if idea is good and if they know that you would give the documents which they require like utilization certificate statement of expenditure etc well in time there is no reason why they should not give you projects so it is that idea which can make a difference the way you have written the proposal which is going to uh, you know make your uh, case more clearer to them so do not hesitate to write go on writing time has come that they understand that they need to pump in more more money to research so be it private or government they'll have to do that and uh, finally it is a university the the colleges and the universities who are going to you know give them the innovations this industry people hardly have time even to think i would say not that they are not doing a great job but they are so busy in many kinds of uh, meetings we can do that job much better so i am sure that in years to come you know the gdp percentage which gets pumped into actually uh, research will increase and that will definitely Uh, actually uh, witness a sea change in funding 
even to private colleges and that uh, would lead to a lot of innovations a lot of innovation means a lot of uh, translation and if that translation happens our country you know obviously it's doing excellent but it can there's always a scope to do better as i said i'm a learner so industry is also learning and our country is also learning i'm sure we'll do our best yes ma'am thank you very much it was a great interactive session we have learned many things from you and definitely i would like to highlight one point that we have been also doing webinars regularly weekly daily basis so that to nurture the students in our institute uh thank you very much ma'am it was an inspirational talk i have learned many things from you and i hope everyone has enjoyed it over to your pita ma'am thank you ma'am thank you it was pleasure thank you so much to interact <laughs> it was a wonderful session ma'am the chat box is full of uh, you can see chat book is uh, chat box is full of compliments that it was a wonderful and very informative session 190 participants were attached with us throughout the session and they complimented each and every participant complimented for you that it was a full of information and uh, it was full of motivation indeed so thank you so much for being here ma'am and uh, now we have with us our honorable vice chairman sir uh, mr shantanu kharia ji and i would like him to propose word of thanks to dr vandana patravle ma'am Good evening, good afternoon. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. And uh, I have not heard your whole session. But yes, I have 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 heard your whole एंड जो पॉइंट आपने उठाया था कि वी हैव टू फार्मास्यूटिकल इंडस्ट्रीज एंड अ कॉलेज एंड वी शुड एक्चुअली फोकस टुवर्ड्स द रिसर्च सो यस दिस इज द नीड ऑफ द आर फॉर द इंडियन इकोनॉमिक सिस्टम एज वेल एज टू टेक इंडिया टू अ नेक्स्ट लेवल और हम भी इसी चीज के लिए आगे प्रयास करेंगे निश्चित तौर पर अगर कोई भी गाइडेंस चाहिए होगा तो हम डेफिनेटली आपसे लेंगे भी कि हम किस तरीके से बच्चों में वो रिसर्च पोटेंशियल और वो रिसर्च की तरफ जो एक रुझान होता है वो उनका बढ़ाए एंड आई होप सो कि सारे पार्टिसिपेंट्स को सेशन बहुत अच्छा लगा होगा सो थैंक यू वेरी मच मैम थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच एंड आई विल टेक इट एज म्यूचुअल सो आई हैव मेनी प्रोडक्ट्स व्हिच कैन बी ट्रांसलेटेड इन योर इंडस्ट्री टू श्योर श्योर डेफिनेटली मैम एंड एज यू कैन सी एवरीवन इज यू नो आस्किंग सर्टेन क्वेश्चन दे हैव मेनी क्वेश्चन इन द क्वेश्चन आंसर बॉक्स सो इफ यू आर कंफर्टेबल वी विल मेल यू द क्वेश्चंस टू योर मेल आईडी सो दैट यू कैन आंसर ऑल दोस क्वेश्चंस आई इट लास्ट आई ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ एंटायर मॉडर्न फैमिली आई एक्सटेंड माय हार्टफेल थैंक टू डॉक्टर वंदना पत्रावले मैम फॉर जॉइनिंग अस एंड एनलाइटनिंग अस विद द वेरी इंफॉर्मेटिव सेशन that you have given to the budding researchers and uh, those who are willing or those who are, who are who want to make their career in research as a you know as a goal or they they want to even start the career in the research so they will get a motivation from your lecture this lecture will also be available on youtube so after this session within 24 hour it will also get uploaded on youtube so those who have missed anything they can get uh, the information again from the youtube channel uh, our youtube channel uh, at last i thank all the panelists dr sapna malviya madam head uh, department of pharmacy modern group of institution our honorable vice chairman sir our group director sir dr puneet kumar dwedi and our honorable chairman sir dr Anil, uh, mr anil kharia ji on behalf of entire modern family i thank you so much ma'am i also thank all the participants those who have who, uh, who have been there throughout the session and i request all the participant to fill uh, fill up the feedback form it it is available in the chat box also you will get it after the host will end the session so you will get the uh, feedback form and you will get the uh, certificate after the webinar after one or two hour of the webinar you will get certificate too so be there uh, on uh, next webinar we have on 10th of july we have a webinar 
so please join us i have already shared the link of the webinar in the chat box so please join us on 10th of july uh, once again on behalf of entire modern family i thank you so much ma'am thank you